Tired of winning the tailgate, but losing the games? We can't help that. But we can tell you what the hell is up with each team and what's going on across sunny San Marcos. Texas State fans, get on your feet. You're listening to Squaring Around with Jacob Rodriguez and Andrew Zimmel. I keep that saved. Keep that one. Keep that on me, bro. Keep it that's, in the a, that's the best. That's the best video I've ever seen in my life. Welcome to Squaring oh. Around, episode eight. I'm Jacob Rodriguez. That's Texas State Sports Press Andrew Zimmel. And this week, we are super happy to be joined by the editor, of the San Marcos Daily Record, Colton McWilliams. Colton that covers everything from the Bobcats to the Rattlers. He also worked with us at the Star. This kind of feels like a Cats Got Our Tongues reunion. Remember that podcast from Deep in the Crypt? Yeah, I was, I was about a- to say, I think we've got like three fifths of the universe, like the OG University Star crew over here. Yeah, I was hoping that that was how Jacob was going to start giving me credit for all the work I did at the Star. But yeah, that that too. <laughs> I do all give right. you credit. I give you credit all the time. I, I, I want to start this podcast with a disclaimer. All right. Last time, two weeks in a row. Mama Rodriguez was mad at me because I was wearing the Pirates hat. All right, Pirates hat can come off. Last week, everybody was giving me shit for the North Dakota State hook, like pullover. So I said, I'll wear the Texas State jersey. I'll put the Texas State jersey on. I'll cram my white ass in this shit. So here we are. Am I Texas good enough for you? I got the Brady McBride jersey on. All right, we're good here. I've dealt with two weeks of this. It's 20 below outside. I'm not wearing anything. Well, I'm freezing, but we're doing it, all right? That's how we. That's what we're doing on the square. I want to get that off the chest first. All right, now we can start the podcast. I'm going to link to Andrew's yeah. own fans in the podcast description, too, because I'm sure that's in the works as well. You look like you come off the bench in the line. <laughs> if, if only they had had you when Brady was the quarterback, maybe he could have gotten a throw off or two. You know, throw me a left tackle, coach. I'm ready. So I'm ready. This is kind of the avenue I wanted to start with this week anyway is kind of fan engagement, right? This week, uh, well, I guess it was really last week that the Loud Crowd announced that they were going to be back. For those of you that don't know, the Loud Crowd is like the student organization within the student organization, fan group kind of, you know, they hype up the crowds and stuff. So they took to Twitter and they said, the leaders of our student section, the Bobcat crew and the athletic department said, it's only right to restore the traditions of the Loud Crowd. They're doing this because attendance basically everywhere is horrible. (laughs) Uh, I have the attendance numbers from the last 12 years. So this is from the last year, 2022 to 2012. In 2012, total attendance for game days, uh, game day attendance at football games, 113,000. So a little over that for six games, right? This year, 2022, total attendance, six games, you know, last year of SPAV. 105,000. So we've actually gotten kind of worse. Actually, the best year so far was, uh, what is that? 2014, 123,000. So not great. Boys, what do you think? Oh, it's, it's, like I said, it's just, I think it's just kind of epidemic to like where Texas State's at, considering like all their records. You know, I was going over, kind of the, how baseball's been doing cause since they're the since they've been kind of been like one of the better programs and even and it, just going through their attendance records like even their attendance has been down so it's I think I don't think it's just a Texas State problem I do think it's a I guess an athletic pr- problem like across not just at Texas State but also at UTSA North Texas right so like just people like students are just not wanting to go to games and you know, I was actually doing part of a story, like, I guess kind of a sneak peek. I'm doing this article over, like, kind of the revival of the Loud Crowd, and I'm talking to a bunch of, you know, former president and actually one of the founding members of the Loud Crowd. And they're, I think, I think it was the former, one of the former presidents was talking about, yeah, I think it's just a thing that's across, that is kind of affecting all of college athletics. It's just like college students are just finding more stuff to do that is, not kind of tied to athletics. I think that is also a big part. So it'll be interesting to see like what the loud crowd, like with it coming back, what, what, what is this kind of contingency going to do to kind of get all these students kind of back into like, you know, Strahan or Bob, 
Bobcat Ballpark in Bobcat Stadium. I have an obvious answer. I want to start with Jacob here. What would you do to bring fans back to the uh, the arena, Jacob? Dollar beer night, baby. Okay. <laughs> you go with alcohol. Colton? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think part of it is, like, the team's just got to start winning again. I think you just got to insert, like, you just have to insert, like, some type of energy to, be, to get students. Like, yeah, you have to make, you've got to make going to the game, like, an experience like you can't well, would you say a like party some... would you say it has to be like a party <laughs> i guess you could say like hashtag party in the end zone i was going <laughs> with this if what's the not the key to having a good college party that's what they need to do it's a college atmosphere it used to be a party school there's clearly somebody around that knew how to throw a party then we'll definitely a known partier what makes a good party jacob alcohol was one of them colton said uh, good, good ratio music, good atmosphere you're missing one thing what gets guys to a party females oh. girls if you're going to a basketball game and it's me and my buddies that's great but i'm gonna go to the bar is where everybody's at right i'm gonna go where people are at you got to find a way to get people at these games that other people want to be around okay I went to all those games. There's a very famous photo of me from an ESPN Plus broadcast my senior year where it was me, the girlfriends of the players, all in the student section. I'm yelling at a referee, and they're holding up a sign saying, like, go number 88. That was it. Those were everybody in the stands. The only people there were me and the girlfriends of the players. You got to find a way to get people going. So you said alcohol sales. That's a really good one. In-game music, in-game entertainment, that's another really good one. You got to bring the cool people there. How does Texas State get cool people to go to the games? That That's where my head's at. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they can do it. Uh, you know, nothing well, they, don't send, they don't send you tickets, so... They don't, not yet. <laughs> we need some you know what I mean? Like if, I'll tell you, if I was at Texas State right now, if I was in San Marcos, what I would be doing is I would be talking to some of these fraternities, right? We saw that a little bit towards the end of our, like, Texas State tenure, where they were like, hey, why don't you guys come to the games, right? And they were like, well, there's other things to do. There's things better to do. So figure out why, like, how to get those guys and girls and people to go to the games. That would be my, like, number one suggestion. Yeah. And one cool person yeah. that Texas State does have, right, circling back to the football team is G.J. Kinney, who's already getting some love from 24-7 Sports as being perhaps one of the best recruiting hires in the country so far? Yeah, Colton, yeah, let's, I want to go with you. What do you think about this so far? I mean, as far as I'm, like, seeing it, I, I'm actually, like, I think, I hate to say it, it's so refreshing to see, like, all these high schools, like, oh, hey, Texas State's at our high school. Oh, my gosh, what a shock. Like, we are so happy to have y'all. Like, it's it's a night and day comparison to, to like, when, when Spad was in charge. It was, like, like, it, it's pretty obvious, like, spe- like, all these, like, that Texas high school, uh, that coaches ring, it's, like, they hated staff. Like, they did not, they felt like he, like, spurred them. I think someone said it best is, like, yeah, it felt like Texas State would rather take a JUCO person than a high school recruit or, like, someone from the transfer portal. And and you can see, like, what, and I can see what uh, Coach, what Kenny is doing. Like, he knows, like, like he honestly saw like what the offensive line was after uh our one of our two best offensive line prospects left and he's like, you know what, I'm just gonna bring our entire all O line from Incarnate Word. Like But you know, we'll see it, if that I, works. Really, Do you think that's gonna work? I mean, the way I see it is like I I think in Kenny's mind, like kinda using I think I know, I feel I think Kenny just saw saw like kinda I guess the talent aspect at Texas. He's like, I think I've got better players at Incarnate Word that could actually that that could actually help us like move forward because he knows that it's one in the trenches. Like he needs a really good offensive line. You re- need a really good defensive line in order to, su- to succeed at any level. Still kind of yeah. a numbers game too because they have twenty three official signees. The last signee was Connor Fox. They have three commits that are not yet signed. The first one. It was part of that initial group that they had offered out uh, as Taylor Starling, DB out of South Oak Cliff. And uh, Jalason Landry was the next one. He's out of CE King High School. 
And then Terry Webb's a DO that they offered uh, this week. So committed, not signed. Uh, no, he just he just signed like just right before this podcast. What uh, the hell, Colton? <laughs> yeah. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, okay. it was a, like I got a message on the football account. I was like, oh hey, we just signed like Terry Webb, and, and it was just like, oh okay, let me get yeah. So that yeah, it literally just happened before we started recording this. So we we saw the JMU last year was able to compete from like the FCS to jump to FBS. But they were a established program, and they had like established success long term. Whereas Incarnate Word kind of felt like a one off this year. You know what I mean? They didn't. They didn't feel like they were established. So, do you think that those players come in and immediately push guys from South Alabama and Troy around, Colton? I mean, I think I've got more faith in that. I think the coaching staff, because you got to remember, Kenny didn't only, you know, even though Kenny was here for one year in Incarnate Word, he took the majority of those coaches who helped build that incarnate, basically what's what they've done at incarnate word, like, oh, Mac Leftwich, he was a graduate assistant when Eric Morris took over back in 2018. Like, a lot of those core UIW players, coaches, are there at Texas State. And I think it's more of like, I think they're, they know how to put their players in a, in a better position. And I think that's going to help. Like, I think whether the talent gap helped having all these incarnate word players come over from Texas to state, is it going to help them get over the hump? Like, I think it's just, I have to wait and see because I can't just judge because, you know, like no sense of the Southland, but like the Southland's not the Sunbelt conference. I mean. And the best you know, team that they played all year, the best team they played all year was North Dakota state. And I mean, they yeah. look good, but let's be honest here. They, they I don't think North Dakota State's pushing around, you know, GMU this year. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to push around Coastal Carolina two years ago. You know what I mean? So it's like mm-hmm. I, I like where we're going. Like, you know, taking the incarnate word coaching staff and players is great. But are they are, – are we going to compete? Because this is the other question. And, Jacob, I, I tagged you in this with Kenny on the cover of uh, Dave Campbell Football Magazine – when do you think that we're going to get on the cover, Colton? Do you think he gets us on the cover? Jacob, you said six years? Six months. You're insane, Colton. <laughs> uh, it might be maybe after year two, maybe. Just like I, I'm so – like I'm really happy like where things are going, but I'm also really like cautious because I really don't know like – because I think that's my major question is like, okay, you did this at Incarnate Word. How are you going to transition this into Texas at Texas State? Like, I I need to see a proof of con- concept before before I want to say, like, okay, this is, like, a really good hire. Because, you know, we all said this about Spavadol. Like, you know, when Spavadol came in, it's like, okay, he's going to fix the offense what, where Withers didn't. And if you look at, you know, the, especially at the SP Plus offensive numbers, his best year was 2020 and then you just see like the downhill slide from 2020 and it gets back it gets all the way back to like withers error like offense like that's kind of how bad it was so yeah i just need to see a proof of concept before we start putting dj kenny on back on the cover gotcha yeah. all right i i just would like to defend my guy jakey here for a moment uh, he did have to rebuild from a talent pool that Withers did not build. Uh, there's a reason that he went to the transfer portal. He needed adults in the room. He could not take mm-hmm. a bunch of 18 year olds. Everybody hates him for some reason. Like high school coaches only hates Babadol because he didn't take their kids, which, you know, whatever. They've got reason to. But he needed adults in the room. And Withers before him, reason that the offense wasn't very good is because he had to clean up the entire program. <laughs> okay. There were some dudes yeah. that he went on record saying, wasn't a big fan of. Yeah, that so, was Colton's one of his Colton's first articles, I think, too. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah no, I'm. I don't hate Spavadol for what he what he did for the through the transfer reporter. I think there might have been a better way to handle it because I feel like Kenny's handling it a lot better than what Spav. I th- I'm trying to. Yeah, I think Kenny's probably more. I think he just kind of gets it. Just being a. I'm not. I guess not being a head coach but also being like a coach I don't know like it it just seems like Kenny just gets it where Spav like especially on the recruiting trail like I don't think recruiting was Spav's like strength I think recruiting for Kenny it's like 
he knows what to do, but he's also got his guys, like, they know what to do, if that makes sense. Whereas Bath, he just, I guess you could say, like, he maybe hire like, people he knew would, or, like, because people that, um, maybe he, like, friends of, like, oh, hey, here's my brother, or here's one of my friends I knew from, from Cal, or, or Texas A&M and all of that stuff, where with Kenny, it's like, okay, I've worked with these people, I know what they can do, I know they can succeed in this and this and that. I will say, too, Cali ball is totally different than Texas ball, so. Yes. yes. In what way? You know, just the grind mentality, the relationships. It's kind of clicky, too, so, you know. Yeah, I want you to defend that take. I don't know. It's I did. Whatever. I just did. What are you talking about? I don't think it's that different. Colton, I defer to you. <laughs> I think I think probably the vibes over playing football at Cal are a little bit different than over here, but, I, but like I said, I, I personally haven't. I think the only California school I know is like, is it that Matter Day school that's always really good and always like plays like Duncanville and all of that stuff? That, whatever. I'm not going off vibes. Sorry, guys. I'm not okay. saying that the all vibes right. are better in Texas than there are in California. Texas, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's just whatever. 24 7 Sports just... has the crystal ball. We got the vibe check. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Jay Rodriguez looks into the crystal ball and says, Texas. Not as good players, better vibes. Like better cool. vibes, great. Love better that ingredients, one. better pasta. Hey, another thing uh, that's got some, I guess, shakeups. You know, they're changing the the temperature a little bit on us. Is the basketball team? The basketball team, the men's basketball team is playing uh, Marshall tonight at seven. Uh, they just are coming off of a ULM loss. They lost that game sixty one to fifty eight. Um, this weekend they play Louisiana Lafayette on uh, what is that Saturday? And that's also the same day that they're having the Jeff Foster court dedication. I'm going to be there in some form or fashion. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, this is tonight's game is the one I was kind of circling on my calendar as like a defining moment for their program as it stands right now, just to kind of see what we're standing up to, especially for a game at home, Zimmy. For their program, defining for the season for sure. Defining for the season for, the for sure. Program, the Sun Belt's yeah. wide open right now. Everybody was like, "Oh my God, Texas State's at the bottom of the rankings." This is four weeks ago, right? And then they go on a four-game road trip. But now look at us. It's I weird. must have forgot. It's weird because like they're I don't know from the games I've seen from the parts I've watched they're not very good. But I like nobody's very good right now. So it's one of those weird years where I don't think that there's a team that's like separating usually we are by this point mid-january we have a team or two teams that are like separating themselves from the pack sometimes that's texas state sometimes that's georgia state sometimes that's app state whatever you know normally there's a team that's separating themselves colton correct me here i don't think that there is a team that's like really separating themselves from the pack no like i like i was just curious like okay after the ulm let me check the standings and i swear there's like eight seven different teams that are like either one game or two games behind, like, everyone else. I was kind of like, what? We got like, it right where we wanted, shockingly, boys. Like, Texas State, like, yeah, I was like, shockingly, like, Texas State's kind of still in this. I'm like, and I'm like, kind of looking around, like, I want to see, like, who the dominant, but no, it's like, it's really, I, I don't think I remember it, since covering Texas, Texas State, I don't think I've seen, like, the conference, like, so wide open like this. Like, it's almost shocking that we're kind of still in this. The last time that I remember it being this wide open was 20, like 16, 2015 ish. And that team was good. That was under Casper. Um, but they were like a first round or second round out too. Cause again, like there wasn't any great team, but if everybody is the same, that every game is going to come down to like the ULM game where it's like three point or four point mm-hmm. game. And I- I'll ask you this. Cause you've seen these guys live more times than we have Colton by, you know, tenfold by the, at this point, like, is there a guy on this team that you say, all right, give him the rock, get out of the way. Like, this is a guy that can win us games. I mean, the, the one person that's been doing that is Mason Harrell. Like, that's their dude, you know. And this is something that kind of Coach Johnson kind of harped on. Like, as much as a great player Mason is, like, someone else, like, needs to step up. Like, teams are going to realize, like, we can just, like, triple team Mason Harrell because we know, like, nobody else is going to step up. And, like, I've been trying to find, like, who like who that person's going to be. Like, you know, I've seen Nigel Caesar, you know, he has some bright moments. You know, Nate Martin has his bright moments. But, like, Drew Jennings, you know, he has some of his moments. But there's not 
one consistent player, you can say like, okay, if something, if, if Mason, like, you know, can't take the shot, we need someone else to take that shot. But like, it's, that's kind of with this program. It's like, they're so up and down with like, with kind of like how they handle success. And what's wild is like, look at how they had success on the road compared to at home. Because it's like, it's literally weird seeing like how, comfortable there are on the road and when they come to straight in it's like they fall apart i got a take on this uh has this team ever been good at home no i don't <laughs> think so <laughs> what what is it about playing in front of texas state fans is it the fact that there wasn't a loud crowd you know there wasn't like this sort of like backing is that part of it is it because strand is I don't know if it's a lot bigger than a lot of other places, but it does have a pretty good bowl. Like it has a pretty good, if nobody's in the stadium, you can feel it. You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a, when games aren't sold out or don't have a lot of crowd, you can tell that the place, you know, doesn't have a lot of people. Is you that part of it, Colton? Maker too? The difference maker is the removal of that wall because there's two separate parts that this team has played in front of without that fourth wall there. And then after they broke down that, or, you know, have that the actual bowl part now. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think it's a different experience for sure, but it shouldn't change the way they play that much. Well, and those guys were in high school when that wall was up, Jacob. Yeah, that shouldn't matter. Colton, that Mason, what do you think? Mason was there as <laughs> a freshman year. Like I, like I really, I can't really like pinpoint like why this team struggles at, at home. I don't know. It's like you know, that's kind of like how some people play. Like you know. When, when you get home, you kind of get settled in, like, a routine and all that stuff. You just kind of get complacent. Just being at home where I was on the road, you know, everything, like, changes up. You have to do something different every single time. Like, when no matter where you're traveling to, like, Monroe or, like, Norfolk, Virginia, like, all these different places. So, like, it's – maybe it's, like, the routine. Maybe, like, I'm not really sure, like, why this team, like, doesn't, like, kind of, I guess – have its strong points but it'll be really it'll be really interesting to see <laughs> like how how this team kind of I guess especially you know considering tonight's like the whiteout night like this there should be like quite a bit of people like in the stand so like it'll be see like how that dynamic changes you know also considering like you know I think the past home games like it's been during the winter break and it's literally everyone's like off campus you just have like you know i guess the alumni and like maybe a few like fa you know family and friends and so maybe you, a couple of students who stay in san marcus but it's it's the alumni a couple of old people and you that's who's showing up to these games yeah that, that, yeah well if you listen to these podcasts so, dude, colton's like the one who's there all the time and he's basically having a podcast uh or you know with the coaches and then that's the presser that's what the presser becomes is just colton taking over so i love it like? i'm a huge fan of it yeah what's that like colton because i know jacob and i have both been in press conferences before where it is kind of light on questions when it is just you and the coach what it, like what goes through your head you're like all right well you know it's almost like a conversation at that point right yeah that, it, it's weird because um like, because I remember at the beginning of the season, you know, I would have some of the U star people at like KTSW fans, but like, I was wondering, like, you know, where the heck is everybody? And then I was like, oh, everyone is a student. And like, it's literally just me. So it's just like, well, okay, I guess it's, I guess it's time for me to like shine and all of that stuff. But yeah, it is weird just being the only person in the room, just being like, oh, okay, I guess got to go ask coach all these questions. What's and it like fishing for answers that you want? Because there's been a couple I, times that we've we've seen you out there, Colton. And you're like, all right, let's get a big one. Let's see what we can get here. And how important was it to establish against Georgia State that we were going to out rebound them? Like, if we wasn't just beat by a little, it was going to be a lot. We were going to dominate the board. And Kenzie, how important was it to establish that pass starting? Us just talking to coaches, keeping the, the gas on, putting that foot on the gas, and making sure Georgia State wasn't going to come back. And you know, Kennedy 14 points, you know, really hot from three point line. What was going back for you today? And coach, uh, you know, uh, Kennedy wasn't the only one. Uh, uh, Lauren Thompson had 10 points. Deanna Eaton was having 10, also had 10 points. And what was going right for this offense today? There's a lot of positives, but again, I'm not in reflection mode. I'm really right now wanting to wrap it up with y'all, go celebrate with them, and I now get myself ready for Arkansas State uh, because they're just, you know, as excited as they are to win the championship, I've been excited this entire year preparing to help them 
achieve that. I think it's just, it's weird because, but also like, Coach, I think honestly, Coach Johnson and Coach Steve, they're so fun to talk basketball about because they've got these really informative like answers and like they kind of go into detail. I think one of my favorite, you know, talking to Coach Johnson is like, he, you know, when I think it was when they, what was it? I forgot which game was it. It was like they had a really bad home loss. And he goes, like, he really goes into detail. He, he, I think it was, I forgot what game it was, but he kind of went into the this aspect, like, you know, this team, like, I think they just live too much in the past. Like, they are kind of coasting off of these two conference conference championships. Like, they think, like, oh, we've done this before. So, like, this is automatically going to happen. And he's, like, he's there going to the press conference, like, trying, trying to get these guys to realize, like, no, like, it just doesn't happen for y'all. Like, y'all actually have to kind of put in the work like it does a like conference championship doesn't happen overnight like they just need that leadership yeah, I saw to like him. help them like get over that hump when he when they dropped the first conference game too he went off in the presser he came in it was like the league play is here man yeah league play is here obviously you know um uh, um, there are no surprises in league play you know they're very familiar with us as we were, were with them you know um we need to be better at it at, at defending we need to be better at completing plays. We need to be better at rebounding in crucial moments. So uh, we got a long way to go. We, uh, we do. You know, I, I've said that before, that this is a team that's growing, trying to find its identity, uh, and now it's lead playing, and, and we, sh- <laughs> we we have to know who we are. Yep, 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 yep. I, I, yeah, it was like ULM game. It was, yeah, I think that's what it was. It was the ULM game. Uh, he went off of them. It was like, you know, there is no more like, oh, just wait and see. Like, now, nah, conference play is here. We need to, we need to elevate our game. I think that's what I appreciate about like Coach Johnson the most. It's like he has this really calm demeanor, but like when he like when he realizes like kind of almost like in an angry, not being angry, but just like he knows like this team needs to get more. But he says it's like such in a calm kind of like a calm, intelligent way that it's like, it does really speak volumes, like how much he cares about the team and how much, like he really is like a great coach. On the flip side of that too, the the other team that's really dominating this, this year is the, been the women's team. And they're going on to a, a road trip to, what is that? Arkansas? No, they just played Arkansas. I think it's Monroe. Yeah. If I remember well, correctly. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Well, that was good. What do you think about that team? I actually, I like this team because I kind of, it's almost the opposite of the men's team, but because, you know, the two main players on this, you know, it's Kennedy Taylor and Tanisha Hood, but I'm been seeing like a lot, a lot of the players have been stepping up. I think Tiana Eaton, she's been a really great player that has stepped up her game. Ja'Kayla Bowie, she's another great player that's also elevated her game, but I think the uh, it's really their post play that I've been really impressed with. You know, having Laura Thompson, uh, Jada Reed, and then uh, Nicole Left, they've been really been putting in the work. Just, I think it was after their loss to Louisiana, Coach Z, like, he was, that was like one of the shortest press conferences, like, me being by myself, and it was just really Coach Z, like, needing more from this team. And I think that was, again, they were out rebounded like 40 to 20. And since then, like, that Georgia State game and then the Arkansas State game, 40-plus rebounds. And it's literally, like, just those three post players just getting the boards, getting those offensive rebounds, getting those defensive rebounds, and just kind of setting the tone for the defense and the offense. Those those three players I've been really impressed with, but also, like, they're, they know what they want. They want to compete for that conference championship they want to get that title ring and if when you're looking at the stands like they're in the top four like they are more than capable enough to play with your you know your james madison's your louisiana's your choice i think they're right there they just kind of have to keep this consistency up yeah do you care about the regular season colton i think the way i review about regular season it's like you're basically building moment. You're building yourself up to where you get into conference play. Where conference play, you're just trying to get that. It's about getting that, you know, a really high seed, and then just trying to continue 
just basically you've done all this work now you got to go finish it i think kind of i guess in the non-conference like does it really matter you know not really because like all that matter you're basically preparing yourself for like the grind of like getting the you know getting that conference title like the regular season title of and then preparing yourself for going into the tournament and getting what you know what what really matters the most is like beating everybody to get the co- to get the tournament title that gets you that made into the NCAA tournament. Give us some wrestling comp for both these teams. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Start with the men's team and then go to the women's. What's the wrestling comp? The wrestling for the men's team. It's always I would would compare the men's team to like a middle card wrestler that's like they are like they could be at the very top of the card like be your main event they just they make those itty bitty those small mistakes to where like you know they can be there but like they're still stuck in that second year and with the women's team like they're honestly like they are kind of like that championship contender like they that's going to be in the main main event. It's just you're populated with like four other teams that are also main event wrestlers, and it's all about like how can you uh, separate yourself from the others? If that if that makes sense. It does. Thank you, Colton. <laughs> the Sun Belt Conference guy, just go. announced that they're adding beach volleyball in 2023. Uh, Texas State's not going to be a part of that initial group that participates in that stuff that they're going to start doing. Uh, but I'm already hearing rumblings, you know, hey, get out to Sewell Park. We got to start recruiting for this team. Uh, I'd love to be involved in volleyball. Uh, Texas got one of the, uh, some of the best beaches in the country. And I'm not talking about anywhere in Houston. Those are all disgusting. I'm talking about South Padre Island. I don't want anybody from Sewell on the freaking sand volleyball team. If we roll out the sand volleyball team and it's a bunch of bums that are just at Sewell Park all the time, we're never going to win anything. I think guys are pretty good. You ever try to play pickup at Sewell Park? It's pretty tough. No, I have not. But I, I those guys don't go to class. Yeah, so the, right. they better be good. Yeah, they take the that Jowers class, like <laughs> like how, the volleyball basics class. <laughs> they they take that sunbathing course real seriously over there. Yeah. Hey, you know, someone's got to do it. Hey, wish it was me. And uh, last thing I want to talk about, this wouldn't be – podcast we weren't talking about winning teams and the team that we can always count on to win stuff is the track team and they had their first meet last weekend in lubbock and the dominic yancey first of all this is the newer news uh, earned the first sunbelt athlete of the week award of the entire season that's because uh, he broke a 21 second mark in the men's 200 meter um so it's the first time that's ever happened in school history and then also in that four by four relay they broke yeah, Yancey and his team, you know, the other four guys, helped break a school record that had stood for 37 years. That final time, 308-23. That Fast. before your dad was there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I was curious. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'll have to ask my dad. He probably knows those records off the top of his head. But, yeah. And also, I got to mention something. We got a pole vaulter by the name of Ty Eaton, right? So... This guy, you know, we're always talking about familial relationships, how that's pretty cool. You know, we got the Big Bo brothers and offensive line. Um, That's very cool. This guy could be Zimmel's brother. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Eaton. Put the side-by-side up, Jacob. I will. Don't you worry. I'm going to take care of you in post. But he could definitely be Zimmel's brother. We got to do a 23 of me. He looks like Ryan, (laughs) your little brother. That's insane. No, I, there have been a couple of guys that have come through Texas State that I look at on the quad and I'm like, we related? Could we be related? <laughs> Maybe. I just, you know, it's fine. It's whatever. Hey, I, that just means you have championship DNA in your system? Oh, 100%. I could have told you that, dude. I was talking the other day about a guy. I said, you know, my dad tried to make me a pro baseball player and he failed. Not because I wasn't good enough, because he was a terrible coach. I, on the other hand, will get my seat to the pros. Triple A at the freaking like bottom of the barrel. I'm not saying you're gonna see a Zimmel in the All Star game. I'm just saying that don't be shocked when uh, he's leading the fan vote. Okay, just putting that out there. Well, Ty Eaton Zimmel, hidden last name. Uh, hidden last name. Jumped. Uh, well, not jumped. I guess because he's a pole vaulter. You know, so he did pole the vaulted. Vault. vaulted. He had a he had a 
15 and a half foot uh, pole vault in his first collegiate meet. Pretty good. If you have a wall that's uh, 16 feet, he's not getting over that. But <laughs> if it's 15 and a half, he's going to get in. I'm going to have to look for him at my next family reunion. Yeah, you need a jersey, or what? You, what, you need a singlet from him now? A singlet? Yeah, yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna put a singlet on me from the uh, pole vaulting team. He's gonna sign it and everything. You? I wouldn't mind one of the. Yeah, no, I don't. We're good. Texas State track fans, don't don't send me any of the spandex. I'm good on that. I'm good on spandex. Yeah, so watch out. Track's definitely gonna break some more records this year. They always do though. They they do these like They're ridiculous, things. man. It's we, amazing. I got in trouble when not in trouble, but people were asking me like, why aren't you at these like track events? And I was like, Well, you can't really broadcast them on the radio. It's like, you know, almost impossible to do that. So we didn't send uh cousin Ryan out there. He should have been he should have been covering track. No, Claire probably had a lot more fun. She no, to get to that four by four, that's usually the last event of every meet. And so, you know, if you're there, if you want to cover that whole event, you got to, first of all, you got to go to Lubbock. We did not go to Lubbock, obviously, for the budget obviously. of the show. And then, then you got to stay all day from like 8 a.m. when they start doing uh, the distance runs all the way to, <laughs> to the quick, end of the event. Quick thing here. I was and about then, to then... say, I, I've covered, when I was at Wimberley, or we had, we had actually a group of guys high school boys that actually won the state championship and I had to go to the state meet and like I don't think people realize like you have to stay the entire week. like there is no taking break kids it was literally me like okay here's shot plan I'm gonna take some photos like get pictures of the medal stand and then I have to turn around you have to go to triple jump okay let me go take pictures and then you have this long waiting period to all the running events like then this is coming from like a person who ran track in high school and all that stuff like track meets are not fun to watch they're like fun to go just, to, though, Colton. Don't pretend yeah. you didn't have a good time going to track meets. No, like, I guess when you're an athlete and all of that stuff, it's fun because, like, you do your event, you go rest and all of that stuff, and then you go, okay, let's go do, you know, go run hurdles or, like, go practice mile relay. If you're there watching, I guess if you're not, like, a track junkie like I am who's, like, really excited about track, like, I could see, like, how, how like, you're just literally sitting there, like, waiting for like your you know your kid or like the person you're here to watch just like run their event <laughs> that's all they're doing it's just hey we gotta go <laughs> yeah no that's insane now track i like that though colton's a track junkie i would have never guessed that track junkie well look at him track junkie. kid looks like he could run a four minute mile right now well i don't know if y'all know this but like you do know i've got like a state medal like in the there you go state medal in what State medal in what, Colton? You cut yourself off there. So my senior year, I actually went to state like the 800 meter relay, and then I also went to state in the 300 meter hurdles. Like, wow, where'd you place? Like, like, but like, like, so like, but track is actually like a really big in, thing in my family. Like, I think all four of my siblings have like a state medal, and then my mom has a state medal. I think my dad's the only person who doesn't have a state medal, and like the furthest he went was like the re- like the regional finals. Stud mode activated. Cool. Well, before we go, I just want to say, you know, thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah, you know, this is a great little university star reunion. Episode eight, squaring around. Thanks. Thanks for listening. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow the boys on Twitter. Eat them up. Eat them up.